All right, so welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and also on YouTube if you're watching later on. Um, for the first deck to kick off our 12-hour sub-goal stream today, uh, it's going to be Selesnia Value. So I was r looking at Naya Value again um, and uh, kind of going through that deck and I was thinking that I'd, I'm not sure if the the red really adds a whole lot. So like basically main deck I was using red for... Um, Dire Fleet Daredevil, which is an awesome card, and for uh, Lava Coil, which is a really good removal spell. However, these days, with Hydroid Crisis being a big thing, Lava Coil is not as good anymore because uh, creatures get out of Lava Coil range pretty quickly. Um, you, know, you have to get the Wild Growth Walker immediately with Lava Coil. You can't, you can't wait at all. Um, but yeah, Hydroid Crisis can just be too big. And so I wonder if Baffling End may be a little bit better of a removal spell. So we got Baffling Ends instead. And since I'm not playing the red, um, and I'm only playing the two colors, I get to play Land of War Elves. Before I, I like the three color mana base was kind of tough to be able to have Land of War Elves. So that's like my the other pull to just going the two color is having Land of War Elves there instead of Daredevils. Um, <clears throat> so I'm so two cards that I'm really worried about. Not only Hydra Crisis, um, but then also Finality. Those are like the two cards I'm worried about the most. I don't really have any any great answers to finality still, um, but I I am making this deck a lot better against Hydro Crisis than what it was before. So we got the baff baffling ends, we got the four of those, and then I'm also playing Sun Cleansers in the sideboard because this is a card I can get with Bugler. So Sun Cleanser will just kill Hydro Crisis um, immediately as it is, or I can um, shrink like a Wild Growth Walker and keep Wild Growth Walkers from gaining counters. Um, or same with like Branch Walker or Jade Light. Um, and I can do this like after combat, like maybe like they block with a Wild Growth Walker on like some smaller creature and then I shrink the Wild Growth Walker after combat kind of thing. You can kind of use it as a trick also. But it's a card I can find with Bugler. Um, so I'm gonna try this out for that matchup. Uh, it's also really good against like Terramander. So the Terramanders can't um, adapt or uh, Runaway Steamkin keep those steamkins from getting counters so it's a it's a good card against mono red anyway just a one four you know like a one four is a good body against mono red and then if they're playing steamkin keep that thing from getting counters got our harpooners against mono blue even though um can't find harpooners with bugler but i think it's probably worth it and actually i think i may want to go for binding to harpooner no i like harpooners the other thing about sun cleanser and harpooner like you know, these these things die and stuff, and they're real good. They're two drops with the Johnny. They're good two drops to have a Johnny minus. I wanted to fit a fourth of Johnny in here. Um, I think I'd have to take a Biogenic Ooze out, but we'll see if I if I should have a fourth of Johnny whenever we're playing the games. But I kind of want to fit a fourth of Johnny in here. Uh, of course, Knight of Autumn's great. Uh, Spyglass can shut down Teferi and Escanta. Um, binding good against the blue black and blue red decks. Um, same with, it's good against Wilderness Reclamation as well. Uh, Vivian's just another great card. So let's see if we just play Celesnia. Finality is like probably the, the card in the, the format that I'm going to want to see the least. Because as you can tell, all of our creatures die to finality. So it's another important reason to have a Johnny's, that a Johnny's can uh, pump up our creatures above finality range. Yeah, but... It looks like it's a cheap deck for four elves, like cheap mana cost wise. Uh, but we can really use a whole lot of mana. Like we have, you know, like the growth chamber guardians get to adapt for mana. But basically, with buglers, buglers mean and like these these cards, like branch walker, jade lights. The whole value part is like our hand stays filled, and so like we can, you know, it's good for us to have six mana, so we can be casting multiple cards, seven mana, so on. Same with Vivian, gets you more cards. Biogenic ooze, we can make a lot more oozes. We have a lot of ways to use mana. So, yeah. I think Ooze is better than March. Um, did I do this thing yet? Uh, I did already. I, this is the kind of deck where we do get... Um, we do have board stalls quite a bit of, like, of the opponent having creatures, we have us having creatures, and they just kind of stare each other down. And Biogenic Ooze... Uh, can kind of take over single-handedly by just like pumping man into, into it every turn and making a bunch of oozes, making them really big. Um, Planeswalker ults are pretty big for us. 
terrible hands are also pretty big for us, it looks like. Wow. All right, we're on four. Thought-bound phantasm. This creature can get pretty big pretty quickly. That's a combo. <laughs> You're playing Seraph of the Scales and Urza's Ruinous Blast in the same deck? Madman. And we can't stop this combo that our opponent has going with the Night Veil, Sprite, and Thoughtbound Phantasm. Seems like this could be a, a good matchup for Sun Cleanser, though. Sun Cleanser uh, keeping the opponent from uh, getting counters on their things. Same with Crowl Harpooners. So, like, we have some good sideboard options here, but our four-card hand is just... Not going to get there. I think I'm basically seeing if I draw a baffling end. Um, here, if I if I can't draw a baffling end, I mean we're, we're just going to we're just going to be dead. All right, I'm getting it one more turn for baffling end. We want a baffling end to the Thoughtbound Phantasm. But I guess they'll just they'll just get my stuff with Thief anyway. Skinny fat man, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. First sub of the day. All right, let's get all these cards. Ixalan's Binding is usually just great against blue black. So is Vivian Reed. That's a lot of cards. Um, I don't think we really need Wild Growth Walker. Life gain uh, in this matchup shouldn't be that important. Um. And I kind of like all these cards. All these cards are good. Yeah, let's go down on Sun Cleanser. Maybe yeah, I'm just not going to play Sun Cleanser with having and Baffling End and Ixalan's Binding. Just, I mean, I, I would like to play Sun Cleanser in this matchup, but we just have too many good cards. Um... All right, sorry, I had to mute that. Um, I think I'm going to trim one Ajani. And some Buglers. 
Yeah, I guess I'm just kind of taking out some buglers. I brought in just tons of cards that are not bugler hits. You know, binding and harpooner. Basically, all the cards, all the cards I brought in were not bugler hits. And if I take out other cards, then the buglers are just going to be really bad. So might as well just take the buglers out. I don't think Vivian will be too slow. Their their deck's pretty slow. Um, I don't want both these oozes and Vivian. You know, I don't want a four, two fives, or four and three fives. Do I mulligan this? I mean, we just went to four. Nah, I'll just keep it. We're a 25 land deck, right? Oh, I have 24 lands? Oh. I should probably have 25. 24 may be okay. Need to land War Elves and stuff too. Hey, up front. Um, I'll just keep it on top. I want. I'd rather draw a land, but if if the next card's a land, uh, then Branch Walker will just draw us that land anyway. If the next card's not a land, then you know we're drawing the Branch Walker instead, and we'll put we'll mill that card over. So basically, when you want to land, taking like the branch walker in that slot is just as good. Let's see? So I could have just put the branch walker in the graveyard, but we got a free branch walker in play instead. Still drew that card. Is it better to binding the Night Veil Sprite or the Demir Spy Bug? Probably the Sprite, right? Maybe the Bug. Let's kind of see what they do here. If they if they block or not. That's a good call. Yeah, the sprite is the enabler. Um, and yeah, whether they have more bugs or phantasms or anything. Um, the, I guess I'm, I'd be a little worried about... You know, they just have like discoveries. You know, like they have other enablers. Sprite's not like the only enabler. Discoveries and stuff, and then the spy bug gets really big. The, the sprite, like, the sprite on its own is never going to be that big. Never going to, like, you know, do more than just trade with, like, a branch walker kind of thing. Because, like, like, they could play fourth, like, if I take sprite, they could play fourth land, another spy bug, and then, like, a discovery, and start growing them. Um, and then, like, I only have the Vivian to kill one, and I can't kill the other. Where if they have, like, like Sprite isn't really killing me. I'm going to take the Spy Bug. I think the... I think that's, like, a way I could lose if they have another bug and other, other enabler kind of things and, and make them really big. I don't think this... I, like, I'm not too scared of the Sprite. I will trade Branch Walker for Sprite. Yeah, I guess I guess they wanted to block. Okay. Sure.
me? Let's tear this place apart. Hopefully the card advantage that Vivian provides over time is too much for the opponent to overcome. That's something I want to kill. It's a little odd they just play it like that in, into a Vivian. wonder if they have a, a thing to protect it. Draw and fire. I guess that answer is no. Keeping the forest in hand for this disinformation campaign if our opponent plays it. It's unlikely that they'll play it considering they're at six and we have all these attackers. I'm not sure why they think that dealing one to me is better than dealing one to Vivian. Like, if, if my life total, if it's at 15 or if it's at 16, if that matters. I can't imagine it does. I mean, I kind of do want to play these Sun Cleansers. I, mean, I play one Cleanser over a Bugler. to be your surveil deck. These glasses are dirty. Mm. Why do our hands have to keep sucking? All right, Razorcon, up to you. Your turn. We've really seen removal from them. Um, I think it's okay to play the Growth Chamber Guardian next turn, even though we won't be able to adapt. If, if we do play the Growth Chamber Guardian next turn and our opponent kills it, though, um, we're in a pretty rough spot because we don't have anything else to do. But we're probably drawing spells here pretty soon. We've already seen six lands between the five here and the one we scry down there. So we've already seen six out of the 24. Seven out of the 24. Just play around syncopate, I suppose. Unexplained disappearance. I think I can explain that disappearance. I think our opponent just, uh, you know, cast that card. I think that's what happened. Wow. All right. So eight out of eight out of twenty-four lands. So there are sixteen left out of the next fifty cards. Hope there's like three more on top that our opponent hits gets with the Thief of Sanity. <laughs> yeah, we could not get worse draws in game one or game three. Like the game one mulling to four, that's like a you know, like a bottom like you know, five percent of games or or whatever, and then 
this one's probably like a bottom 10% of games of like what we can have. So, if we, so it's possible we lose this matchup, but yeah, it's possible we lose this match, but we have pretty unlucky to lose. I think like, you know, our, you know, even bottom 20% hands would be able to win, but we're not there. We'll see what we draw. Looks like they got some spells. They're reading them. <laughs> yeah, they got three spells. Okay. Well, we're still in there. That's a good one. So if I activate Growth Chamber Guardian now, we get to go get the... Growth Chamber Guardian before our opponent can um, use a removal spell. But I would kind of assume with how much surveilling they have and everything, I would kind of assume they're a Thought Erasure deck. That just seems like that makes sense. You know, Thought Erasure is just an uncommon. I would assume they would just have Thought Erasures. So I don't really want to put the Growth Chamber Guardian in my hand right now. What I'm saying. So whatever card they grabbed from us, it's better than Baffling End and Growth Chamber Guardian. Whatever whatever card they chose. It certainly makes sense it's better than Growth Chamber Guardian. But so a card better than Baffling End. That's kind of scary. Yeah, so it could be Ixlon's Binding, could be a Planeswalker, could be like a Johnny or Vivian, um, could be a Biogenic Ooze. Those all sound like cards better than my little 4 4s here. All right, so same thing. I can't. I can't adapt Growth Chamber Guardian and play the new one. Might as well wait. And in case our opponent made, made like maybe they would have like double disinformation campaign or something. I want to get the Arch of Araska on the battlefield. tapped out. Zach, we need some help. <laughs> we drew we have drawn one baffling end. So I guess I guess that's all we get. It's one baffling end. Cast all these spells that we draw. So unfortunately, the Growth Chamber Guardian did shuffle in that land that we put at the bottom earlier. So that could have been like one of the lands we drew. Yeah, Araska needs to help.
I mean, good news is we do have four fours. Four fours are big compared to one twos and one threes. Next turn I'll have two mana if I activate Ar Arazka. Just doing that because we have a lot of two drops. You know, we could, could have found like a Kral Harpooner, uh, for example, or Branch Walker, or another Land War Elf, or Baffling End, or, you know, we have a lot of two mana cards. Hey, what's up, Badonk? Uh, I do not have any Flyers, I have Harpooners. Uh, I have Vivians, I have Baffling Ends and Ixalan's Bindings. This is going to hurt pretty bad though. Uh, double Snitch with double Night Veil Sprite. One mana off because our land war elf is tapped. I'm making another one. Yeah, doing 12 hours today. Um, for hitting a sub goal on my birthday about two weeks ago. Oh my gosh. I think we're going to lose this. Kind of happens when you mull. And keep a land or you know a land or elf in a two drop, and the first seven turns you only draw a baffling end and all lands. Finally, on turn number eight, we drew a biogenic ooze. I'm feeling good, track team. Ready to play some magic all day. The, the surveil with the snitches put me down to one. The binding can get rid of one, can get rid of one sprite, but that's lethal. One of the most most disappointing matches I've ever had in my life, right there. All right, let's go. Let's start over. We got this branch walker here. Ooh. That's a good card. We just had two games of a couple of our worst, you know, worst hands we can have in the deck, twice in a row. They only deal damage on their turn? Are you sure about that? It seems pretty weird. I guess I don't no know that card too well, you know, it's a you know whispering snitch.
Okay, yeah, no, it's just for the for the first time each turn. Of more than you assume. Can they kill us on turn five or have fogs for the rest of the game? Whoa. That was not something I was expecting. Be strong. Uh, no, no problem, Gate. I, I didn't even really realize the first time each turn kind of thing. Anyway, I can no longer stand by and watch. Time is much more malleable than people think. I brought some friends. It is good to see you, my friend. We still need So, you. I'm just using the... Um... If I graveyard this, I'm drawing the Wild Growth Walker. I don't really want to draw that card, but... It's probably better than drawing the Wild Growth Walker. I so, yeah, I was killing the Teferi this turn. Coming. So, might as well just minus the Ajani. Um, and get an explore creature. Oh wait, I, I guess I could have plussed and played new Ajani and plussed and had lethal. I suppose that's a thing that I could have done with my life. <clears throat> could have gone double plus. It's going all in, of course, you know, with our, you know, if our opponent had any interaction, we're going all in there. Look how far you have come. Uh, Settle is not a card that I'm worried about at all. I would take like the five basics with, you know, having the Ajani ultimate and everything. And, you know, like I wouldn't have, like, honestly, I, I would have preferred Settle to root, out, to root Snare there, honestly. I would have rathered my creatures get Settled and Shuffle. Um, the library put five lands into play kind of thing. They get three cards a turn. Sarge of Araska is a pain. Alright. Did not find another settle or root, root snare or anything like that. Alright, let's get these bindings. Uh, Knight of Autumns, Spyglass, Vivian. I still have, like, Vivian they can kill. Um, Krasis, if they have Krasis. Alright, Wow Growth Walker. Growth Chamber Guardian. Maybe, maybe trim some ooze. Let's trim one ooze. Maybe two oozes. And then Wild Growths. i just take all the oozes out. Yeah. I just want the two mana cards. I, I want creatures on the battlefield before we're a Johnny ing.
Deck's not liking us a ton. It's not white mana. I think this is better than five, though. Um, you know, we'll have Wild Growth Walker on turn two and Jade Light on turn three. And then... Uh, Hopefully by that time, Night of Autumn for turn four to blow up a uh, Wilderness Reclamation. Hey, Zabaj. Where's our white mana? There's just no white mana in our deck. I'd love to binding a wilderness reclamation, but I guess it's probably not even as good against them with them playing like Teferis and stuff like that. Good. Couldn't be cleansing Nova here. Glad, glad it's not a cleansing Nova. I'm known for my. You know what? I'm not done yet. Our deck is not liking us today. We are not having any any good luck no today. No time for a break. Let's skip to the good part. Um, I, I like Lava Coil myself. I just, in my Grixis control deck, I just play four Lava Coils. I like it more than the other two mana removal spells. Um, you're worse against the Danto Vanguard. Um. By just playing those. We need to move quickly. Not, at least not another Nexus, so we can potentially draw a white mana source and binding this to fairy. Nope. Deck, can you help us out at all? It is not wanting to. Yeah, right? Noble Hierarch would be so much better than Land War Elves. Why can't we have some Noble Hierarchs and some Bird of Paradises? Gotta get that white mana. Maybe some Al Avacyn's Pilgrim. I would be very happy if Reclamation was banned. Same thing. I'm not leading with Wild Growth. I'm just going Branch Walker. 
I'm yeah, I'm starting with Branch Walker on turn two into Jade Light and just, you know, trying to, to dig for white mana here. Try to get to Knight of Autumn. Cause we need like even, we just need any land for a Jade Light anyway. But I guess if one of our top three cards, none of them are lands. Okay. He's got a land. Are we just playing mono green? Who knows? Sad. I don't know. Should I just keep the Knight of Autumn on top? Maybe I need to keep that card on top. We would have sir, we would have explored this growth chamber guardian to the graveyard, and the land we're off to the graveyard, and then we would have drawn Vivian for the next turn. That was a good thing we got rid of it. Yeah, this deck really doesn't like us. This is crazy. Two games in a row with, with no lands. There's really no white mana. We've seen so many cards. There are... 14 white sources in the deck. Which isn't a, isn't a ton. So it should probably be a 15th, but... We got to go through so many cards. Alright, so if it is settled... What do I want to get settled? Three things. Well, we've seen them play Cleansing Nova. Yeah, last game we couldn't. Last game we couldn't draw a, a single spell. Would have just uh, yeah averaged those together. Yeah, last match couldn't draw any spells. This time can't draw any lands. Can just put those together. Seriously, we've gone through twelve cards. Twelve cards. We got one one basic forest. From our opener.
Unreal. We're 20 cards deep now. Still haven't seen a white source. You make two blockers. Block, block. This is lethal through two blockers of Donna Hope. Some funnel magic here. All right. They can only wait. Can they make three now? One, two. No, they can only make two. One and one. Just a bunch of little three twos and four threes. Ended up being good enough. All right, we'll see if we can uh, actually have lands and spells and stuff. Hey, we got we have white mana. Haven't seen white mana. And forever. <laughs> hey, coconuts. Yeah, couldn't. Yeah, couldn't get any white mana. It was so bad. But I guess all you drew were lands and fogs. It's kind of the problem with fogs is, you know, they don't. While they delay the game, they don't help progress your your board or your your hand or anything like that. Um, You took out wilderness. That that can't be correct. You should not be scared of enchantment hate and take out your best card in your deck because your opponent has removal for it. Like you don't just take out your best creature because your cre because your opponent's playing you know Vras's contempt or whatever. Don't 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 ever board out your wilderness reclamations. Don't ever do that. Just, yeah. That'd be my advice. Just don't, don't sideboard them out. Even if you, if your opponent destroys them, whatever your opponent destroys them. Just too good of a card. It's what your whole deck's built around. Let's go with the double growth chamber guardian. They could certainly have essence scatter, or essence capture. I mean. Um, They could have another trickster, so I don't really want to throw the branch walker out to like another trickster either. Alright, so they countered that, so let's go. Now we can get the other branch walker here. Baffling End's a, a weird one. I do like, I mean, Baffling End's a good card. So yeah, we'll just keep it on library. It doesn't mean, you know, we're not going to be able to play Vivian next turn. Um. Yeah, Wilderness Reclamation would have helped you not die to my board. It would have, like with Donna Hope, you just you'd get to activate Donna Hope so much if you have Wilderness Reclamation. All right, and then they're just they're just kind of sitting back. I don't need to play a Growth Chamber Guardian into a counter spell. You know, we're obviously ahead on board. We're the only you know we have stuff our opponent doesn't. We can. Uh, I sit back and make them play stuff. <laughs> You've had a real bad day today, man. I'm sorry, coconuts. Our day was pretty bad too. We we before before that match. The reason why I was kind of like pretty sad 
before that match, we had... Um, I guess we're in a baffling end. They used the Storm Tamer. We had lost to, like, a pre-con deck. Um, you know, like, Moldafor, game one, and then game game three. We mulled a six, but kept four lands and then drew only lands. And lost to a pre-con deck, and I was sad. But yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, I, I would never recommend taking out Wilderness Reclamation against anybody. I think it, it just makes like your your land so much better, all that kind of stuff. Um, hmm. That kind of match, like maybe Gift to Paradise. Like if your Gift to Paradise is where Wilderness Reclamations made, that would have been better. So our opponent could have like the dive down, like they could block the 4-4 and dive down the Tempest Gen uh, to keep it alive. And so just attacking with the 4-4, that could happen. Oh, wow. Not what I was expecting at all. All right, so another baffling end and our harpooners coming on in here. Oozes out. Do I want these, do I want the bindings and do I want the sun cleansers? Probably not the sun cleanser. Sun cleanser is really good against um, Terramander, but that's kind of it. And it's just a one four body. I don't think it's better than the other stuff we're doing. So, Bindings and Vivian is, like, other options. Knight of Autumn can destroy Curious Obsession as well. So we have, like, some other pretty decent options. Um, what wouldn't we want? The thing is, like, Binding and Vivian are just really expensive and really easy to counter. So that's why I'm not so... I threw them in here just to kind of picture them. Not so sure about them. Um, Johnny's pretty easy to counter also, and if we don't have the creatures that Johnny's not doing a whole lot. Old Bugle Boy 2-3 body isn't super relative. Let's go with some Knight of Autumns that can destroy Curious Obsession or just be a 4-3. You know, the 4 power is real necessary to get through Tempest Gen. No, for the opponent, it'd have to be some kind of way for the opponent to gain counters. I don't think there's anything in Standard. There's other, other formats. Um... Or like, like in, in the other sets, like there's ways for players to get counters. There's like energy. Um, you don't really want to remove your opponent's infect counters, but there's nothing really in standard. Um, Sun Cleanser does say from a creature, so you can keep counters come going from a creature. This is not a, not a good attack to attack for one and um, take two on the way back.
was considering playing the Harpooner and just having the two blockers for the Trickster. Being able to double block. Maybe I should have just led with Harpooner, actually, instead of the Branch Walker and just see if Harpooner resolves. Honestly, I think that was a better play. I think I played that turn not very good. Um... Would I rather Harpooner or Jade Light get countered? I guess I'd rather Harpooner get countered. I resolved really quickly and didn't get countered. Huh. A Johnny can say no attacks in case they had in case that that was another trickster, but they would have trickstered that wild growth. Anyway, in response, they could untap and draw a trickster. Be spell pierce or negate. Sure. I was gonna Johnny minus two and get the harpooner back and have harpooner kill the terramander. But now we just have the Vivian for that. See if they find it. Get to find a counter. They get to look at two cards here. Mm, that's annoying. I could Vivian tick up. How are we doing over here? One, two, three. No, I'm minusing. Would you like to see what's left of? We're looking. Summer? We're in a this pretty bad spot nothing. now. Don't think we're winning this one. Surge Mare is is really good. Um. I guess if they do want to get another card, they have to attack me with the Surge Mare. Okay. Huh. Draw I've like a Baffling Edge. Worse. Or a Llanowar Elf. Gain four, but they can still kill us with the like they can still deal ten the next turn. Maybe I want these bindings. Yeah, let's go with let's go for the bindings on the play. I think I just want more removal. Um, you know, they're, they're not good against uh, Dive Down or Spell Pierce or Negate, but 
Oh well. So how's everybody's day going so far? Y'all are having a good Wednesday? Oh yeah, I'm sorry, coconuts. Ugh. Our deck hasn't been too kind to us either. All right, I hope everything's going good, Colonel Fault. There, the doctor. Yeah, I've never really played best of one. Um. I really want to draw another green source here. I'd really like to draw a forest. I guess I just have to throw these things into counter spells now. Really want to be able to double spell. Please don't have protection. Uh. It's raining in LA, worst day ever. Our day hasn't been a whole lot better over here. Starting to do stuff. We got that forest. Temistin is pretty big, though. It's more likely that my opponent has, uh, like, negate kind of thing because they didn't counter the. Branch walkers last time. Um, this isn't the worst of draws. I guess playing the Ajani into the negate would have forced them to. Will not allow them to just activate their Terramander. They're going to hit for 11 next turn. It's not a, it's not a great draw, but I do get to Growth Chamber Guardian plus a Johnny next turn, and the, the Growth Chamber Guardian is going to be a 4 4. That's attacking in.
Alright, I'll take the trade. I don't want the trade anymore. Now we're just dead. Uh yeah, we're taking twelve. Man, Terramander is such a good card. Being the five five and everything. So big. That is so good. All right, well, had a lot of disappointing games, a lot of a lot of mana troubles. Um, you know, even that last game, you know, like we're just sitting there on the three lands for a while, not able to double spell. I think our better our deck is better than what it showed. We just had a lot of mana troubles. It's kind of one of those things that just happens, you know? Um, so I didn't get to curve out too much. Um, maybe we don't need three Sun Cleansers on the board. Again, like, you know, this is our, as I talked to you at the beginning of the video, this is like our, our main answer for Krasis, which is a, a problematic card. Um, it is good against Terramander, you know, like I, I could have had these in against Terramander, but it's it's really basically only good against Terramander in Mono Blue. Saw Tempest Gin do its thing, you know, three mana, seven fours. I don't know, Mono Blue just had a really good hand and we got stuck on lands, so we lost. Um, I don't think our Mono Blue matchup is that bad, but we're going to lose sometimes. You're, we'll win other ones, you know, like like the game two when we got to play our spells and we when we had Harpooner. I don't know. All right, so that's that's Lesnia value. Uh, better deck than it performed. So if you're watching this video later on on YouTube, of course, don't forget to hit that subscription button over there. Uh, we'll be doing another. Not only we're we doing the 12-hour stream today, but we'll be doing another 12-hour stream when we get to the 2,000 YouTube subscribers. So YouTube.com/slash Todd Stevens MTG. That's where you can find the channel there. Um, but that's it for Selesnia value. Thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next video.